I work for the Department of State. I have never served in the military, but my uh, work has uh, had me work very closely with the military. Um, most of my career has been spent in Asia, and one of the op one of the uh, jobs that I did was to plan for the evacuation of American citizens, um, either in the case of war or civil uh, issues or natural disasters. For example, I was stationed in Japan for a number of years, and you saw the recent earthquake there. We were in a position at any point in time to evacuate American citizens back to the United States for their safety. The only part of the U.S. government that has those tools is the military, the helicopters, the ships, the numbers of, of men and women that you need to make something like that happen. And my job, uh, in part, was to interface directly with the military to plan for those evacuations uh, in Korea, in Japan, and other parts of the world. So I was very lucky that I spent a lot of time around the military and I often uh, was able to participate in exercises with them. Um, I was invited down to Camp Lejeune where I worked with the Marine Corps and I worked very closely with the, the Marine Corps and the Army in Korea and Japan uh, in, proce in the process of planning these evacuations. Because of that, um, I certainly was not a soldier and would never pretend to be a soldier, but having spent time around the military, having lived in the field with them for short periods of time, my adjustment to Iraq was fairly minimal compared to someone who, who may have come from uh, a cold start, if you will. I would say at a place like Hammer, it was probably 30% who went out and 70% who stayed in. Most of the soldiers never left the base. Most of the soldiers got up in their containerized housing unit, walked 100 yards to the chow hall, walked back to their office space, and worked tw their 12 to 14 hour shift. At the end of their shift, they walked 50 yards to their sleeping space, went to bed till tomorrow. As I said, Groundhog Day was a joke that we made every day. Um, as far as the leadership and the mission are concerned, one of the things that was of concern to all of us was the mission. We came at a time when Iraq was neither a shooting war nor a peaceful place. It was somewhere in between. Our mission was primarily to reconstruct Iraq, to provide governance, to provide security, and this created a very hot, cold environment. Very rarely were the conditions hot, where people were shooting at each other and trying to harm each other. Oftentimes they were cold, and we were able to do our business without danger, but with the presence of danger. This meant that a lot of soldiers were not, as, were not fully engaged. They were not as busy as they had to be. Soldiers, for example, whose job it was to provide emergency medical care, oftentimes, gratefully, didn't have a lot of opportunities to provide that medical care. I've written a book about the year I spent in Iraq and it will be coming out at the end of September of 2011. The name of the book is, is We Meant Well, How I Helped Lose the Battle for Iraqi Hearts and Minds. I recount in this book some of the issues that plagued us and plagued our mission at Fob Hammer. How do we approach this reconstruction? How do we make this thing work? In the end, I don't think it worked very well. The United States spent $58 billion reconstructing Iraq, building chicken plants and bakeries and schools and factories that we thought were going to give people alternatives to terrorism, alternatives to violence. It didn't work out, mainly because we didn't know what we were doing. And we floundered around trying to find a solution for all this violence, and I'm afraid we failed.